way back in the year 1612, one of the most famous witch trials in British history took place at Lancaster City Castle, where the following people were all found guilty of witchcraft. Elizabeth Southern, Elizabeth Devise, James Devise, Alison Devise, Catherine Hewitt, John and Jane Bullcock, Alice Nutter, Isabel Roby, Margaret Pearson. They were all found guilty of the murder of 17 local people by witchcraft. The evidence against them came from the youngest of the Device family, a nine-year-old girl called Jeanette Device. She was picked up by the local magistrate, Roger Noel, placed on top of a desk, and there she told the jury how she'd seen these dogs arrive at Malkin Tower. Tib belonging to Demdike, Fancy belonging to Chattox, Dandy belonging to James Device, and Ball belonging to Alison Device. Of course, the jury believed that a young girl of this age could not be manipulated and believed every single word she said. As a result, her entire family were found guilty of witchcraft, along with those other names I mentioned. We do know that in 1613, the clerk to the courts was a gentleman of the name of Thomas Potts, and he wrote a book in that year called The Wonderful Discovery of Witches in Lancashire, which would later on earn him rather a lot of money. We have to rely on that book being honest and truthful, as it is the only window we have in this whole, whole tragic, tragic story. Now, along with the convicted Pendle witches came another group from a rather beautiful hall called Salmsby Hall, which is near Preston in West Lancashire. Jane Southworth, the daughter of Sir Richard Southworth, and her two best friends, twin sisters, Jeanette and Ellen Brearley, they're enjoying a meal at Salisbury Hall when the King's Commission arrive and they shout, In the name of the King, we arrest you for witchcraft! Sir Richard shouts, My daughter a witch, it can't be! They were shackled and taken to the city of Lancaster. There they are thrown into the same cell where the Pendle witches are being held. On the 20th of August, 1612, Jane climbs onto the shoulders of her two best friends, the Brearley sisters, and hears this roar outside her cell window. She looks out of the cell window and there she can clearly see the Pendle Witches with their hands tied behind their backs, making their way to the pillory for their execution. Jane watches this huge crowd gather and then she watches in horror as the head jailer, Mr. Thomas Cavell, kicks the trestles from underneath these poor unfortunate people and they literally strangle to death. There is no drop you'd literally strangle to death as the ligature tightens around your windpipe. The two brilliant girls at the bottom of the cell shout out to Jane, what's happening, Jane, what's happening? Terrible things are happening, she said. After a short while, they hear the sounds of footsteps outside the cell. A key is placed in the door, the door is opened, and there is Mr. Thomas Cavell, the head jailer of Lancaster City Castle. Right, you three, we just dealt with that lot. It's your turn next, follow me. The three of them must have been terrified. They made them with the twisting staircase and into the same courts that had just dispatched the Pendle Witches. They stood in front of James Altham, City of London, Edmund Bromley, City of London, Thomas Potts, City of London, Roger Noel, local magistrate for Reed and Burnley, William Holden, local magistrate for Barrow Ford, and Mr. Nicholas Bannister, local magistrate for the Burnley region. The jury were all male because in those days, women were not permitted to have a brain. And it was believed that women didn't even have a brain at that period of time. When it came to male chauvinism, women suffered terribly at that period of time. These three girls stood in front of the prosecution and the jury, and they must have felt very, very exposed. Now, as was the case with the Pendle witches, they brought in another child witness, a little girl called Gracie Sabots. Now, Gracie was the head gardener's daughter at Sarsby Hall, and she was the chief witness against the three accused. She was picked up like little Jeanette was and placed on top of a desk so the jury could see her. James Oltham, the senior judge, said, Riding lady, we don't your testament against these three witches. I will, sir. I were walking down the banks of the River Ribble, sir. I saw James Souther from Sarsby Hall, and her two best friends, the Brearley girls, sir. They were swimming in the river, sir. It was a hot summer's day. I then saw these unusual dogs arrive. I've never seen the breed before, sir. Long snouts, red eyes, white teeth, cloven hoofs, sir. They jumped into the river 
materialised into human beings and picked up all three women. They danced in a circle and they paired off for a meal. I then watched from a distance, sir, as fraternisation was taking place with these demonic spectres. On the second day, Ellen Brearley came to see me. She said, Gracie, would you like to have a bit of fun? All of a sudden, sir, she changed from a woman into a dog and she tried to suffocate me under a blanket of straw, but I escaped, sir. On the third day, the three of them came back to see me. They said, Gracie, would you like to have a bit of fun? I said, fun? What do you mean by fun? Well, a little boy's just been born at Sarnsby Hall. It's called Thomas Walshman. So? He hasn't been christened yet. We'd like to drink his blood. No, 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 said Gracie. I, d I don't want to get involved in that. James Oldham picked up the gavel. We find you guilty. You will die like the rest this morning. Before the gavel came down, his companion, Edmund Bromley, said, No, 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 no. Let her finish her testimony. Sir, in the dead of night, they made their way into Sarnsby Hall, sir. They went up to the long gallery where the little Walshman boy was sleeping, sir. Over four nights, they repeated this, sir, by taking him out of his cot. They pricked his stomach and they drank his blood, sir. It was then interned at Sarnsby Church, sir. In the dead of night, the three of them came back. They dug up the coffin, they took the baby out of the coffin, they boiled the flesh, they ate the flesh and kept some body fats that would enable them to change shape, sir. That was it. This time, Bromley brought the gavel up. We find you guilty! You will die like the rest this morning! Before the gavel came down, Jane South had pulled off a miracle. Sir, sir! I beg of you, sir, to cross-examine this young girl, sir. She has been manipulated by a Catholic priest hiding at Sarsby Hall, sir. That one word, Catholicism, made everyone sit back. Uh, you're an Anglican, you say? Sir James Oldham. Uh, yes, sir, I am, sir. I am married into the south of family, so they've never liked me because of my Anglican view, sir. This young girl's been manipulated by a Catholic priest to falsely incriminate me and my two friends, sir. Please cross-examine her. Well, they took Grace next door. The court was then reassembled. Jane waited with the two Brearley sisters. Would they live? Would they die? The tension must have been awesome. James Oldham stood up. In the light of new evidence, we find you, Jane South, with you, Jean and Ellen Brearley, innocent of the crimes against you. You're free to go. The three of them hugged each other. As they left Lancaster City Castle, Jane turned and looked up at the pillory, basically the gallows. There she saw the pendle which is still hanging by their necks and blowing in the wind. At the end of the pillory, she saw three empty nooses and she realised she had not only saved her life, but the lives of her two best friends. But our story doesn't really end there. They came back to Sarnsby Hall and had the party of all parties. However, 200 years later, two local doctors, Dr. Whittaker and Dr. Dawson, they met in a public house in the village of Worley near Clitheroe. Over a glass of punch in front of a roaring fire, they discussed the Pendle Witch story. They then discussed the Salisbury Hall Witch story. And Whittaker said to Dawson, I believe young Gracie was telling the truth. How? said his companion. Well, the way she's described those three dogs in the River Ribble sounded like the dogs belonged to um, Demdike, Chaddox and James Device. Tip ball fancy. Remember, she wasn't in court that day and the way she described them was absolutely perfect. But also, let's write to York Minster and get permission to exhume the Watchman grave. They wrote to York Minster. The Reverend John Franks arrived and he went into Sarnsby Church and got the grave records. He then paced out to a certain area in the cemetery. There, gentlemen. That's a gentleman, start digging there. Just two feet under the surface, they came across a lozenge-shaped child's coffin. A white coffin with bands across it, shaped like a lozenge. Under Church of England supervision, the Reverend John Franks opened the coffin and found it contained nothing. It seems that young Gracie may just have been telling the truth. We shall never, ever know.